Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Snakes. It plays four to eight players. It's 12 and up, and uh, it plays like, what, half an hour, an hour? You can kind yeah. of play as long as you want. And in the game Snakes, you are attempting to deceive people with bizarre questions. A question card will come up. There'll be an answer on the back of that card. And you're going to get a random identity. You're either going to be a snake, an ordinary human, or, of course, the mongoose of truth, which actually comes with this little guy here. He's cute. Yes. And uh, uh, it's going to be a secret, so you're only going to know your own ident identity. And the snakes are trying to deceive people into picking the wrong answer, the humans are trying to decipher the real answer, and the mongoose is revealed to all players and is also working on the human side. You'll have these voting chips, you'll play them out, and basically if you get the right answer, you'll score points, if you can get people to guess the wrong answer as the snake, you'll get points, and you'll go through six rounds until somebody gets the most points at the end, totaling them up, and whoever has the most is, of course, the winner of the game, Snakes, by Big Potato Games. If you're interested, there's a link down below. Let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play the game, and of course, what we thought of the game. This is Caleb here. He's going to be joining us for talking about the uh, the review of the game portion. Are you excited? I am excited. Excellent. <laughs> to set up the game, you're going to write everyone's name down on this score sheet here. And then once you write down everyone's names, you're going to hand them out a, a set of answer tokens. Once everyone has their answer tokens, you'll shuffle through the character tokens. Um, and then... Um, you'll make sure that these are all face down, too. Face and it's down. based on the number of players. And you flip over one of them. Which one are you going to flip over? Uh, the mongoose. Because this is what <laughs> everyone is going to know about. Yes. Uh, the last thing you do is shuffling this deck of cards and you place it face up in the middle of the table and make sure that nobody ever sees the back of these cards because this is what? The answer. Yeah, and if people <laughs> see that, it's going to ruin the game. And that's basically it. So these guys, Mongoose gets flipped over, the rest of them are face down, names and chits. So we set it up for a five-player game here. So we have two humans, two snakes, and uh, this mongoose here. And the way it works is you take all your answer tokens face down, you've got your secret character card, and you're gonna look at that, and nobody else is gonna look at that either. And then, of course, like I said, the mongoose is going to be revealed, and you're gonna get this little mongoose token. The player who's the mongoose is going to take the card, read the card, and read the answers. And then what follows? Can you tell me? Once you read the answers, then you have everybody close their eyes, and then you uh, count to three, or you can just say, uh, snakes, open your eyes. And then you let them look at the answer key on the back of the card. And then you ask the snakes to close their eyes. And then uh, every player can then open their eyes. And make sure that you do not reveal the answer to anybody but the snakes. So it's kind of like mafia or werewolf in the terms of werewolves know the answer, snakes know the answer, but no one else does. And the objective of the snakes, like we've said, is to make sure that people get the wrong answer, which is why they know the correct answer. The mongoose is trying to direct the players, the ordinary villagers, in this case, to get the right answer. But they may or may not know the question or answer as well. We'll just pick a random answer here and I'll give you an example. So this one here says, in which country did apples originate? Uh, Kazakhstan, China, or India? And you'd have to try and figure that out. And the snakes would know that it's from Kazakhstan, but the other players wouldn't. And that seems like a pretty weird one, right? Kazakhstan? So a lot of these cards are like that. Players are then going to secretly hide their little answers here, and each player is going to choose one of these, A, B, or C. Except for the snakes, they are going to do what? They're going to choose their snake chip. They're always going to choose a snake chip because they don't care about the right answer. They just <laughs> want you to get the answer wrong. So each player will look. If they're a human, they'll go ahead and try and dedu deduce the uh, correct answer. If they are a snake, then they're going to try and uh, get you to guess the wrong answer, but they're also going to put out the snake chip. And then after every single player has put in an answer, uh, you're going to reveal them. And you'll flip over these little answer tiles. And then based on um, what the correct answer is, you'll do scoring. Each player who got the right answer is going to score points for every human that did. If you get the wrong answer, you get nothing. And snakes will get a point for every player who got the wrong answer. So in this case, if there was two C's and the answer was A, every snake is going to get 
two points. And after that, you'll discard this card. You'll, everybody's going to get their little answer chips back. And then you're going to take these character cards and you're going to re reshuffle them up. Deal them out once again, randomly to each player, face down, reveal the next mongoose, and, uh, oops, that's a snake, mongoose, and flip over the next card and place it down and have that card be read out by the new mongoose. You'll play six rounds, and after the sixth round, you'll add up all of the points, and the player with the most points is... The winner. Yes, the winner <laughs> of the game, Snakes. And that, that, that's the game. Let, let's review it now. So let's go ahead and discuss the game Snakes by Big Potato Games. So this is a party game, mm -hmm. right? This is what I would call it. It's, yeah. It plays up to eight players. And I think we played, yesterday we played, what, seven players? Yeah, we played seven. And it probably works better with more than four players. I would Definitely. say the more players, the better gameplay. Because you get a little bit more interaction. You don't want one single person talking their, their butt off the entire game. <laughs> you want to have a variety of people trying to convince you of one thing or another. Mm -hmm. And good guys will convince you, or try to, just as much as bad guys will as well. And there's a load of different strategies in this game as well. Uh, all these cards are going to have different types of uh, questions and answers. And the back is going to be really pretty simple as to what answer it is. Um, one thing I would say about this game, as far as the quality goes, which is what we're going to talk about first, is all the chits are nice. They're thick, they feel good, and they're yeah. easy to look at. Nobody's going to be able to um, determine what you are. But the cards are a little thin, uh, which is kind of general for uh, big potato games. And because of that, if you're not careful, you might sneak a peek at the back here, whether it be because the mongoose player accidentally picks it up yeah. or because they're trying to do this thing and somebody gets a little <laughs> eyeful. It can happen. You have to be aware of that. Make sure everybody's doing their best, their utmost to not look. And if you accidentally take a peek, take a new card. Um, the mongoose is... Good. This is a nice little quality meeple. It's going to last a long time. I like the fact that they plant a tree per game you buy, and the box has a nice insert that fits uh, most things. Uh, all the character chits need a bag, because otherwise it's just going to be flopping around at the top of the bag there. Uh, artwork for the game box is cool. like it. Uh, quality of uh, the artwork and whatnot is very good as well. What do you think about the quality, the game, the artwork, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I agree. I also think that we definitely have to be careful with the answer key on the back. Um, especially like the whole color thing like if somebody was to like be able to accidentally see the color then that would give somebody a real big indication of what the answer might yeah, actually be. They're gonna score be. a point, take a point from other people, and try and convince people of the correct answer because, well, they know it, they saw it. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, it's not like people will do it intentionally yeah. most of the time. I mean, sometimes they will, but it's more like along, along the lines of, well, I've gotta keep playing because otherwise it will ruin the round. So I'll just do my best to make it as fair and balanced as possible. And that can, you know, uh, turn the tides on some <laughs> games. Uh, but the artwork, what do you think? You like the yeah. crazy tie-dye looking artwork? Yeah, I think it's clear and concise, and it's easy to read uh, the text on there, and everybody's roles are clear, so I like the artwork. I think it's simple. And look at this box. It reminds me kind of like one of those puzzles where you look at it, and it's like swirls as you're staring at it. Or one of my favorite is those pictures that when you stare at them long enough, it like creates a picture in and of itself. I like that. Uh, gameplay. This is a trader game, a deduction game of sorts. You have a limited amount of information based on what players know, and of course all the questions are like way, way out there. They're bizarre. Um, one of them was like, what did the author of Frankenstein do with their husband's remains? Did they have the coffin in their attic? Did they carry the heart with them? Or did they, what's the other one? The other one was she wore black. For the rest of her yeah. life. <laughs> and it was, you know, she carried his heart with her for the rest of her life like around i don't know mm, in a box or something, yeah, something bizarre like that, yeah uh, did did steve jobs uh pl ever play it's a like relax did he ever dip his toes in the company toilet or did he play solitaire on a windows. windows pc or did he eat an apple yeah and some of the more obvious answers are usually not the right answers yeah. but they can be sometimes so it's a bit of a mix-up and you're trying to figure it out based on logic and deduction and what the game designers kind of meant for the game to do um, it does a good job of that and there's enough twists and turns in the game which i actually liked as well i thought it was kind of funny where some play players can be like i know the answer i'm correct <laughs> but do they really are they yeah. a snake just trying to pretend? 
or do they actually know the answer and they're just like, I'm solid, you guys decide if it's what you want to do or not, but I know the answer. Or other times people are like, no one has a clue. And the snakes will go, oh, we don't know either. You know, pick your best shot. Maybe it's A, maybe it's B. Or maybe as a snake, you'll pick the right answer on purpose, pretend to be a snake, and then draw people away from that answer so that they do not pick it and thus they score you a ton of points. And there's like multiple different types of strategies in, involved with deduction in this game. And you're constantly changing roles. The, the rounds are like, what, five minutes? Yeah, maybe less than that. Yeah. It just depends on how quickly you answer the question. So you could be a snake one round, or an ordinary human the other, or you could be the mongoose of truth. Um, I've got to play the mongoose a, a bit. You got to play the mongoose. Uh, any, anything about gameplay, your favorite stuff about the game, what do you think? Yeah, I really, I really enjoyed the game. Um, there was one question that asked what was the tallest... Uh, I forget how the question was like worded, the tallest but, building, Big yeah, the ben, tallest building, Pisa or Statue of or Liberty. Statue of Liberty, and that was a very tough question to to answer. And um, I thought that one of the best strategies that was going on was for the snakes to actually give away the answer to lead people away from choosing that actual answer. I think that that's really smart game. Yeah, play. I think Zach was like, yeah, Big Ben seems too obvious, right? Yeah. Like, we know it's a big clock, but it's, you know, and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> the Patriot me is like, it's gonna be the Statue of yeah. Liberty, which is only 10 feet shorter, shorter than the correct answer. And I was just like, ah, man, you led me astray, <laughs> which happens a lot in this game. Yeah. Um, so in gameplay, yeah, super solid. I like playing as the snake, I like playing as the human, and the mongoose was cool too, because people knew you were on the right track, at least trying but when you're the mongoose and you get a question like uh, what are there more of episodes of happy days islands on Fiji or the dimples on a golf ball and you don't know the answer as the mongoose you're of no help it doesn't really matter you're you can be like I think it's this and people can be like okay at least their opinion is correct you can also suss out the correct answer by listening to people you mm -hmm. know there's three snakes or four snakes so you're like okay what answer are they not saying there's right. four people in here <laughs> who don't know the answer and they're just like all three could be it and then there's four people in here that are specifically leading you towards two other answers and you're like ah it's got to be a because they all keep saying b and c so there's like some tricks to it as far as social reasoning goes yeah um things we didn't like about the game uh, like i said the one thing is the cards in the back it's it's too big they could have made it uh, smaller a really small like c on there with no color yeah no color just really because great. it kind of gives it away too much yeah um i if you don't like games where people will lie to you or trick you or like try and deceive you, it's not going to be for you, I suppose. Like the audience, right? Uh, if you don't like somebody going, I promise, I promise you it's A. <laughs> and they're like, and then you pick A and they're just like, but you said A. And I'm like, yeah, I was lying to you on purpose. Better yeah. gameplay to know that it's a snake though. Yeah, it's true. You can try and suss those people out. But <laughs> I guess if you don't like games that lie to you, and then of course, like I said, just the back of these. I, I can't think of really anything else. It's a great party game. If you want something more in depth and more like heavy modern board gamey, then this is not going to be for you. But most big potato games are not super like that anyway. Most of them are like party style, family style games. Um, with a fun little twist to them. And I think if you're looking for that, Snakes is uh, right for you. Yeah. yeah, I think that this is a game that is, it just makes people laugh. And so I think that that's, you know, the biggest thing of this game is to get laughs out of people. So it's not like, oh, take everything so seriously, but more just... Yeah, I, yeah. I agree. You can't take it seriously. Snakes, don't let them charm you into choosing the wrong answer. <laughs> That's the subline. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching. Let's check out the link down below in the description if you'd like to pick up the game. What? You gotta say it with S's. Oh, snakes. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game stream, or review, I guess, not stream. <laughs> if you're interested in taking a look at the game, like I said before, there's a link down below in the description. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and bell notification button to see more videos just like this one here. Take a look at games that you may or may not be interested in. You can also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. I have writers on the site that do games that are not these ones, so you can see different
different reviews in written format uh, when you're at your job and you don't think your boss is looking, you can head over there and check it out. And also go ahead and check out our live streams, which are every Sunday night at what time? 6.30 p.m. PST. <laughs> we play games all the time. We have Caleb over here and Alicia and Callie and a bunch of other guests, Josh and Max, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see us play games like these so you can kind of determine if it's something that you would like. And being able to see the game played in front of you with other players will help deci decide that factor, not just us explaining it to you what we think. You can kind of get your own decisions made that way. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing, seeing you guys next time. time.